This chart shows how that sample data set called dippingbedrock.dat was generated. There were originally total 20 field files or field records were generated, but all of them were formatted and combined together to make this one file. So whenever you import this data set, you have to choose formatted seismic data, not seg2 seismic data. And this chart shows, for example, record number one had 24 channel receiver array located here with the receiver spacing of one and a half meter and the source offset of nine meter. So source was located here. And then the entire source receiver configuration moved each time by nine meters, 19 times to generate this total 20 field records. I go to setup source and receiver here and then choose from formatted seismic data. I select this dipping bedrock.dat and then I click run wizard and I confirm there are total 20 records in the file and I also confirm distance unit of meter and then I click next and I choose active because it was active MSW data and then it was 1D receiver array which was a linear receiver array and then I choose this one for the first record number one source was located off the first channel channel number one and then the source offset was 9 meter and then go to next and I confirm this is the correct information and go to next and here I select this one because both source and receive array moved after collecting one record at one location then I specify the moving direction which was here in other words source and receiver configuration moved towards receiver array by how much it moved by 9 meters each time and go to next and this is the place where I specify my field coordinate which can be arbitrary and only for my own reference my surface coordinate 0 meter starts from the first channel of first field record record number 1 increases this direction and then these are the station numbers and I choose to put 1001 here and then 1002 here like this whenever you change any numbers within these four edit boxes you may need to hit enter a few times to update accordingly all other numbers and then go to next and I review all this information and I confirm this is correct and move to next here I specify begin and end the record as the entire range of the records included in the input file so I now click run, specify output file name, and then it will show me this chart, which shows the correct configuration that I was planning to encode. So this is correct. And this is the end of the source receiver setup for sample data set, dippingbedrock.dat. Now it shows me process will move to next step dispersion image generation okay now I click run now it informs me it's going to move to the second step of analysis which is a dispersion curve extraction And first I click bounds and I choose no to set up the new 
trend of bounce here and I interpret this as my uh, fundamental mode trend so I focus into this zone like this and then extract and I know this is higher mode and I'm going to delete this part also and I add one more point here probably one more again here like this okay so I like this okay I save it and then I see the fundamental mode trend changed a lot here like this so I'm going to delete this bounce trend and set up the new one here like this Okay, and extract, and I know these are higher modes, just delete them. And this may be a little bit too high. So like this, say. Now I'm done with directing all our 20 dispersion curves. So now it's going to move to the next step, which is your inversion. Now uh, I'm going to just uh, run it. It goes through inversion of each individual dispersion curve in the input files. And now it's done.